Thank you so much, Alex. 814 in PIX11 is your local election headquarters. We are keeping tabs on the candidates and the issues that matter most to you before you head to the polls. In just six weeks for the New York primaries, everybody. So PIX11 partnered up with The Hill and Emerson College to poll New Yorkers about the governor's race, where the Democrats and Republicans stand before the June 28th primary. Political analyst and director of the Public Policy Institute at Hunter College, Basil Smichael, he is joining me this morning to weigh in on those results. So good to see you, Basil. Thanks for being here. Good morning. No problem. So, so, Basil, Governor Kathy Hochul's approval ratings took a bit of a hit after that big news about the lieutenant governor, right? We rested and forced to resign. Right. The governor didn't waste any time naming a new running mate. Um, kind of legal maneuvering here that took place for Congressman Antonio Delgado to get on the ballot as her running mate. What do you think about the pick? Well, listen, Antonio's a, a really great leader. Um, when I was at the State Democratic Party, I, I met him and got a chance to work with him a little bit to try to get that congressional seat. Um, so for him, this is a really good move. It sets him up to, you know, be a statewide elected official down the road at some point. But for Democrats as a whole, this is a little troubling because the seat that he vacates mm -hmm. is, a, is a very difficult seat for Democrats to have uh, to be able to hold on to. I know the Democratic campaign committee uh, with the congressional campaign committee centered in D.C. Um, has always looked at that seat <clears throat> to try to to try mm. to maintain their foothold. It's a it's a tough seat for Democrats to hold. So that's the that's sort of the downside yeah. to his pick. Yeah, it's a, a, but it, for him as a as a whole, right, people say he's one of the most bipartisan folks in Congress because that is such a split district, right? That's exactly right. And, you know, it certainly helps her. It helps her. It helps Kathy Hochul campaign. It helps Kathy Hochul um, be able to lock down certain parts of the state, some of the more conservative parts of the state, and certainly some of the more moderate um, suburbs, particularly, you know, in, in Westchester, Long Island, uh, downstate, where she's not known as as well. But um, but you know, for, for him, for the ticket, it's a it's a great choice. Yeah. Uh, th there's there's more work to be done on the back end okay. now. I want to get to the poll now, the, the Emerson College poll, PIX11, showing Governor Hochul's approval ratings at around 36 percent. So the primary is a little over a month away, Basil. What does this mean when you look at these numbers here, right? What does it mean for Hochul's team going into the primary? Well, it means that she's got to do two things. One, she's got to really start uh, making appearances and spending a lot of time uh, with elected leaders that she's come to know in the last few months, particularly downstate. She needs to be able to get some of these headlines off the page. The Brian Benjamin headline, uh, the concerns around her uh, signing this bill to get him to get him off the uh, ballot, uh, which a lot of electeds, even Democrats, did, did like. And so, uh, can, can, she's Basil, got can to you sort explain, of just explain why that is such a problem? Right? One would think, since yeah. he was arrested, that the, she, that they would that he should be off the ballot. Yeah, unfortunately, the law didn't say that. Okay. Uh, the law said that you could only uh, get off the ballot if you died or moved out of the state or took another position. Um, and so it was notoriously difficult to get somebody off the ballot that had already been on through the petition process. This bill, which uh, which she signed into law, adds the uh, if you get arrested, indicted, charged, mm. uh, that adds to the list of things that will get your name off the ballot. A lot of Democrats didn't like that because they yeah. felt it was changing the rules in the middle of the process, in the middle, in the middle of the election. I see. Um, and so they're, they're, a lot of that stays, in, in, and then going back on bail reform, yeah. um, I think a lot of Democrats soured on that. So, you know, just make some appearances with a lot of her friends downstate, and hopefully um, she can turn the page. Yeah, so the approval rating is one thing, but she still has a very strong commanding lead over her Democratic opponents, right? When you look at the numbers, Jumani Williams and Tom Swazi, look at their 12% for Tom Swazi, 7% for Jumani, and 45% for the governor. What does this mean, though, when you factor in those 22% of the undecided? Does it really change much? It, it means she's got to work really hard. It means that, she, and she look, she's a very good retail politician, certainly far more uh, retail than Andrew Cuomo was. And she's still an incumbent governor. She can actually still do a lot while the session's um, still going and legislators are still meeting to pass uh, to pass bills. So she, there's a lot that she can still deliver for New Yorkers. Okay. And I think what high ratings she has now over her opponents, that can increase if she starts to deliver a little bit more. But uh, you know, her fundraising has been extraordinary. So yeah. 
Um, I, I don't know that there are going to be any surprises. It's in, interesting, uh, Basil. On primary day. It's interesting listening to you here because I look at those numbers seeing a 45%. I'm like, wow, that's a really strong number going into the election, right? <laughs> but then there's this Cuomo factor. And if the former governor decides to run as an independent, boy, do those numbers shift. Our poll shows 16% of voters would support him, which leaves Democrats and Republicans in a dead heat, a virtual tie. So what do you think the likelihood, crystal ball, Basil, you know it's my favorite here, of this actually happening? <laughs> Uh, spoiler alert. Um, you know, he could be a spoiler in this race, but, you know, the, he wants, to, he would love, I believe, to be in a much stronger position than he is now. He, he'll always have 30% of the uh, electorate supporting him. You know, every time I'm on TV and I, I get stopped in the street and people say, you know, I still like that guy, though. And, yeah. you know, which is, which is surprising, but it's, it's true that he still has a good 30%. Um, but especially given that everything that's happened over the last few days with the Supreme Court yeah. um, ruling and, and, and a lot of galvanizing around issues, particularly around, around uh, uh, women who are, who are running or mm -hmm. are in office, I don't know that he has a real uh, lane here. So, yeah. you know, he, he would be a spoiler for the Democrats, uh, but the numbers still don't necessarily look encouraging for right. him to enter the race at all. Yeah, those weren't very strong numbers. And just to be clear, he can no longer run as a Democrat. He missed that deadline, so he would have to run, really, as an independent. On the Republican That's side of things, uh, Basil, Long Island Congressman Lee Zeldin, slight lead against Andrew Giuliani here and Rob Astorino, 19% remaining undecided when you look at these numbers. Everyone thought it was going to be a runaway for Lee Zeldin. Uh, what do you think when you look at these numbers, especially those undecideds? Yeah, no, this is a much tighter race on the Republican side. Um, I expect that Lee, Zend Lee Zeldin will still pull this out, but it's a, it's a much, much, much tighter race. The fact that there were candidates that were pre previously off the ballot, got back on, gives them a lot of new energy, a lot of new life. And, and it'll be interesting to see going forward how they embrace or not uh, Donald Trump, you know, is there, are they going to learn from the, the sort of young king example in, the, in Virginia, that governor's race, we can, we can hug him, but we can't embrace Trump, yeah. uh, or, and play more moderate to, to the voters of New York, or are they going to sort of go full Trump here, yeah. um, and, and dig their heels in deeper? It'll it, be, it's a real test for national politics. It is really, and briefly, Basil, we only have a couple seconds left here. Crime, obviously yeah. such a big issue for New Yorkers, but you alluded to the big decision that leaked from the Supreme Court. How could that factor in, not only locally, but nationally as well? I know we only have a few seconds left. Well, it, it galvanizes voters before this midterm. So elections matter. We say it all the time. And I think this, there's a focus on it now more than there, there has been in the last several years. All right. Basil Smeichel.